Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another exciting episode of Lucia's Showcase. I am Lucia's T. Now, going with the theme of this year as it's turning out, I'm taking a look at a lot of games that I missed out on when I was a kid. Especially on the GameCube. So this week, we're taking a look at another one of those, which you already know because it is the title. So all 20 of you, let's get ready. So we're talking about Resident Evil Zero on the Nintendo GameCube. Now this was a game that I was following since the days of it being an N64 game. Back then, I was a little bit of a Nintendo fanboy, which let's face it, I still am, but even more so back then. The Resident Evil series was the reason why I finally branched out. I got a PlayStation because I saw this awesome spread in Game Informer back in the day talking about Resident Evil 2, and at the time, this was probably somewhere in 96, 97, I don't know, I don't even think the game was out yet. But I remember being very, dis there wasn't that many N64 games. I mean, if you remember, it launched with just a few games, which I got every single one of them. But I was starved for content, and this game just looked so awesome. So I think I got a PlayStation in anticipation of it, or, I, I don't know. But anyways, Resident Evil 2 is the reason why I got the PlayStation and then Code Veronica is the reason why I got the Dreamcast. I played every single one of these, and when I found out that Nintendo got an exclusive deal, which guaranteed they were getting Resident Evil 4, and then they were getting Zero, I was so stoked. So stoked. Couldn't wait for it. But also by this time, let's face it, the, the franchise was getting a little stale. Not only did you have the Resident Evils, but then the Silent Hills came out, which I didn't play those, but more survival horror games. You had the Dino Crisis games come out, which was just Resident Evil with a different skin. And by the time I played Resident Evil 3 and Veronica, I'd kind of gotten over the genre. So when Resident Evil Zero got delayed to the GameCube, whatever, and then I believe it came out? And 4 was on the, the horizon, and I just, I don't know, I never picked it up. I had no desire to get it. I don't know if it was the fact that they focused on Rebecca Chambers, which was one of the characters I really didn't care about. Who the hell is this uh, mullet-wearing, tattooed guy? I don't know. I don't know. It just, it went by the wayside. I never got it, and I never really thought about it. So, of course, it's always been there in the background, like, oh, I gotta play this game. So picking up Resident Evil Zero immediately, immediately, you're right back in there. The, the the sense of dread is palpable. I played it on the normal difficulty, and the way this game is structured is that you actually have control of two characters for the majority of the game at once. Every once in a while you'll get separated and have to rescue the other one. Usually Billy has to re rescue Rebecca, I know, <laughs> SJW. But it, usually that's what happens. And it actually found that, I found it was very, very difficult. This is probably the hardest of the old school Resident Evils that I can think of. Not just because you have to monitor one person's health, but you have to monitor two person's health. And if you leave someone in another room and they get attacked and die, your game's over. So you always want to make sure you leave one of your guys, if you're separated, equipped with a gun on attack mode. I don't have footage of this, but I did lose you know, my, my game once because Billy was just chilling with no health, which I found myself a lot in this game having no health, having to run through corridors, praying to God that I wouldn't run out of ammo or I wouldn't run out of this and I would find a spray can or a red and green herb or sometimes having to backtrack to heal myself before a difficult section, which was awesome. The, just the survivability of this pace without knowing what to do was perfect. But yeah, Another time, though, once I realized that Billy did die, I kept him equipped with a gun, and I totally forgot to switch back to him, so when I switched back, I was treated to a nice dead zombie on the ground. So that was really cool. That was really cool. The buddy system gets a little bit of time to get used to, but once I realized you could switch between them by using the X button without having to go through the menu, got very quick at using it. They scare you right off the bat with a damn dog scare, which this whole game especially at the beginning, took me a while to kind of get my fortitude back up because I got that sense of dread that I haven't experienced in a game in years, probably not since the original Dead Space, where I was just like, oh my god, this is too much, I need to take a break, I don't want to play this, get me my binky. It's a Resident Evil game though, there's nothing new in here, they introduced the concept of the buddy system, your inventory is limited, uh, generally saves aren't that 
worrisome. You still have to save with ink ribbon, but every room that has a typewriter has an ink ribbon in it for the most part. It's more the inventory management that'll get you. Story-wise, yeah, they, they kind of had to stretch it a little bit to make a prequel. Like, why is Rebecca here? How come she didn't immediately run for the hills instead of going into the mansion to follow the hapless Bravo team, which the only guy you really see the whole game instantly gets killed in the first few minutes. Kind of like in Resident Evil 1. The whole story with Billy killing 23 people and just the... The, the, the story was interesting though, in the long run, you know, Resident Evil, the games are always out there. And yes, it's giving you some of William Birkin and Albert Wesker, which obviously if you're playing these games chronologically, don't start with zero, otherwise it's gonna ruin the big surprise of one. But it's just, as far as a side story and kind of setting up Resident Evil 1, it does a good job. It kind of fills in some blanks. It's constantly referencing Spencer and Ber like all the other games, so it's nice in that regard. You kind of play this one and it fills in all the exposition from the other games that they never had a chance to. As well as you meet this interesting guy who was the originator of the T-Virus and who makes these leeches who become the ultimate villain, which I won't get into too much about it, but they can create uh, copies of the guy, the, the original creator, who become these leech zombies, which are a pain in the ass. The only effective way of killing them is by using fire against them, so using the Molotov cocktails. Negatives on the game. I mean, I know that this is a positive for me. I love tank controls. I think they work very, very well in a pre-rendered game with angles because if you're always holding forward no matter where the camera shifts to you're going to continue moving forward but i can see how some people would see that as a negative it does give you that constant clunky feel of you can't completely do what you want but for me that's nostalgic now but it also gives you a sense of dread and almost helplessness that a survival horror game is trying to imbue on you especially when you're by yourself the sections where you have to go off alone are some of the strongest as far as intensity and frustration and just all together like the frustration factor on this game is extremely high like i said it's probably the the hardest of any of the original resident evils and i i mean i haven't played any of them in a long time especially i haven't played any of them blind but this one was tough this one was very tough Maybe now that I know where to go, it won't be as hard, but just the amount of leech zombies, the sparsity of a ammo, the fact that all the guns take up two slots and your inventory is very limited and having to manage between two people. Some of the interactables that you need to progress through the story are a little uh, vague at best. There's a button early on in the train, which you have to hit to drop down a ladder to go anywhere. And then the one that really screwed me was in the training facility, where you're supposed to lift a cage with a chain mechanism and I knew it was there I knew it had to be where it was but I swear I must have clicked on the four different ones I don't know 30 times and nothing happened finally I look up in a guide because you know I gotta I gotta beat the game I don't have that much time and it's like yeah go there and I'm like that's where I went I went all over the whole mansion wasted a ton of ammo killed a bunch of guys I didn't have to do and then finally I lift the cage and get to the a boss battle of all things and at this point I have maybe 30 pistol rounds five shotgun rounds and that's about it and molotov cocktails and i literally got down to my last molotov before then beat the guy otherwise i was gonna have to go in with the knife which holy crap thank god i didn't have to do that uh, you got some good callbacks they have the tyrant show up which i'm kind of on the fence if i like that or not i mean for the most part all the bosses are giant insects and bugs but they explain why Cheers to them for that. It's a little weird, maybe it would be good to have read that note earlier, but they explain why, because they were T-Virus subjects being tested on. Which, that's this whole thing's like the testing facility. So you see them testing on mammals, like monkeys, frogs, you got the, um, the, the hunters show up, which the hunters, that's one of the reasons why I stopped playing Resident Evil 1 back in the day, because I couldn't handle the hunters. I got to the point in the first game where they come out and I was like, done! Back to Resident Evil 2, I can handle the liquors, but those hunters, man, oh. And just some of the times where you hear something in the distance and you can't see it because of the pre-rendered backgrounds, I love. I love that. I love just standing there tensely with the gun, just waiting. I mean, some of the some of the times where that happens, pitch black, dead of night, you just, oh god, so scary.
versus if you're playing with a buddy and he's just there sitting with you and giving you advice. Mate. Mate. I hear you, though. I hear you. Come at me, bro. Oh, you scared, though? You scared, though? 1v1 me, though? Mate. Mate. I know you're coming. I know you're coming. Bro! Own you. But all in all, solid Resident Evil game. Not perfect, not by a long shot, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. If I had to give it a rating, i give it an 8.5. Definitely not as good as the first one or the second one, but i put it up there with the third one. Uh, just as far as unlockables after it, you have the standard uh, outfits, and there's like a mini game called Leech Mode, but nothing that I was really that interested in. I'm not crazy like Wes. So yeah, great game. Pick it up. That's your homework. And there you have it, Resident Evil Zero. Great game, pick it up. Now, if you do want to play this game and don't have a GameCube, they did just do an HD re-release combo pack with the Resident Evil 1 remake. So definitely pick that up. It's on Xbox One or PS4. I think it was even the free game on PS4 during October. Well worth it. The Resident Evil 1 remake is amazing. And this game is a lot of fun. And if you don't like tank controls, which how could you not, you can actually change the control scheme, which I know my edgelord buddy Wes Stoppo, when he did his Resident Evil Zero review, he did it that way. So now I'll be able to commiserate with him and kind of compare differences. But I think for the most part, it's the same game. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And also, remember, Nescron is a Patreon-supported show and would not be possible without the support of our Patreons. Please click on the link below and donate what you can. And Dubious Gaming, you the man. Take care.